Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus this is Ahasuerus who reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in the palace in Shushan. In the third year of his reign he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. The power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. He showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. And when these days had passed, the king made a feast unto all the people who were present in the palace at Shushan, both unto great and small, for seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings, and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver, upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold the vessels being diverse one from another and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also, Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bezda, Harbanah, Bigtha, and Abigtha, Zether, and Karkas, the seven chamberlains who served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king, with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen, Vashti, refused to come at the king's commandment brought by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men who knew the times for so was the king's manner toward all who knew law and judgment. And the next unto him were Karzhina, Shether, Admatha, Tarzhish, Mirs, Marcina, and Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, who saw the king's face and who sat first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto Queen Vashti according to law, because she hath not performed the commandment of King Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. And Memukan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people who are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported, King Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, who have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another who is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memukan. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people in their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done, and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants who ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king. And let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto the palace at Shushan, to the house of the women unto the custody of Haggai the king's chamberlain. Keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden who pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in the palace at Shushan there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who had been carried away with Jeconiah king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid wash fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree were heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto the palace at Shushan under the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house into the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness from him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her. And seven maidens who were meet to be given to her out of the king's house, 
and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place in the house of the women. Esther had not shown her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now when every maid's turn had come to go into King Ahasuerus, after she had been twelve months according to the manner of the women for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto he king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned to the second house of the women to the custody of Shushgaz, the king's chamberlain, who kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more unless the king delighted in her and she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, had come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all those who looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his royal house in the tenth month, which is the month of Tabath, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head, and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast, and he made a release to the provinces, and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat at the king's gate. Esther had not yet shown her kindred nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her, for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai as when she was brought up by him. In those days, while Mordecai sat at the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those who kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther informed the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, who were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spoke daily unto him and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he scorned to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Therefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is, the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast per that is, the lot before Haman, from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is, the month of Adar. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore it is not to the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those who have charge of the business, to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand, and gave it unto Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors who were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people in their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written, and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces, to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, and to take the spoil of them for plunder. The copy of the writing, to be given for a commandment in every province, was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. The posts went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in the palace of Shushan. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, 
but the city of Shusan was perplexed. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent Ryman to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hadhach, one of the king's chamberlains whom he had appointed to attend her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai, to know what it was and why it was. So Hadhach went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews, to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the written decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to explain it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. And Hadhach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again Esther spoke unto Hadhach, and gave him a commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his, to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded them to answer Esther, Think not concerning thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house any more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there arise respite and deliverance to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews who are present in Shushan, and fast yet for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night, or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, opposite the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, opposite the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wish thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? It shall be even given thee, to the half of the kingdom. And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king hath said. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart, but when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said moreover, Yeah. Esther the queen let no man but myself come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared, and tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. On that night the king could not sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, 
the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants who ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman had come into the outer court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servants said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in. And the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man thereby whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city. And proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew who sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then Haman took the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate. But Haman hastened to his house, mourning and having his head covered. And Haman told Zerish his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zerish his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, the king's chamberlains came and hastened to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain and to perish. But if we had been sold as bondmen and bondwomen, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could not compensate for the king's damage. Then King Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he, who dared presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned from the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman had fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbanah, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. On that day did King Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews' enemy, unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spoke yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the wickedness of Haman the Agagite and his plot that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king. And said, If it please the king and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king and I am pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews who are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then King Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write yet also for the Jews, as it pleaseth you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, 
for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month that is, the month of Sivan, on the three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded, unto the Jews and to the lieutenants. And the deputies and rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia, a hundred twenty and seven provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof and unto every people in their language, and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. And he wrote in King Ahasuerus' name and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by posts on horseback, and riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries. Therein the king granted the Jews who were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their life to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely, upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the posts who rode upon mules and camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment. And the decree was given at the palace at Shushan. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness, and joy, and honor. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast, and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Now in the twelfth month that is, the month of Adar on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them though it was turned to the contrary. So that the Jews had rule over those who hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. And all the rulers of the provinces, and the lieutenants and the deputies, and those who did the business that belonged to the king, helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces, for this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction, and did what they would unto those who hated them. And in the palace in Shushan the Jews slew and destroyed five hundred men. And Parshandatha and Dalphan and Espada. And Paratha and Adaliah and Aradatha. And Parmashta and Arisai and Aradai and Vahijatha. The ten sons of Haman the son of Hamdatha, the enemy of the Jews they slew, but on the spoil they laid not their hand. On that day the number of those who were slain in the palace at Shushan was brought before the king. And the king said unto Esther the queen, The Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in the palace in Shushan, and the ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. Or what is thy further request? And it shall be done. Then said Esther, If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it so to be done, and the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews who were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day also of the month of Adar, and slew three hundred men at Shushan, but on the spoil they laid not their hand. But the other Jews who were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives, and had rest from their enemies, and slew of their foes seventy and five thousand, but they laid not their hands on the spoil. On the thirteenth day of the month of Adar, and on the fourteenth day of the same they rested, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof and on the fourteenth thereof, and on the fifteenth day of the same they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns made the fourteenth day of the month of Adar a day of gladness and feasting, and a good day, and of sending portions one to another. And Mordecai wrote these things, and sent letters unto all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month of Adar and the fifteenth day of the same yearly. As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun, and as Mordecai had written unto them.
because Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had schemed against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast per that is, the lot to consume them and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that this wicked scheme which Haman devised against the Jews should return upon his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. Therefore they called these days Purim after the name of Pur that is, Lot. Therefore for all the words of this letter, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter and what had come upon them. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, that without fail they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time every year. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, and that these days of Purim should not pass from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihail, and Mordecai the Jew, wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews, to the hundred twenty and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with words of peace and truth. To confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them, and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed regarding the matters of the fastings and their cry. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book, and King Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea. And all the acts of his power and of his might, and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews and accepted by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the well-being of his people and speaking peace to all his seed.